Hello, and welcome to Brubacher and Beyond Podcast, where we are shaping the world we live in so more people can find construction industry uncommonly refreshing. So welcome back to Brubacher and Beyond. Uh, we are doing a recap of the Dirt World Summit. This is the uh, second episode since the first day already went into about uh, our time limit that we'd like to give um, for this. So I'll reintroduce our guest here, uh, Ben from BuildWit. Uh, ben, would you like to introduce yourself again or maybe even a different introduction? Yeah, appreciate it, Chris. Uh, I work on the BuildWit team. I'm I'm really involved more on our events and the people side of things rather than the services and the products that we offer. Uh, Build its whole mission is really around how do we attract, recruit, and keep people in the dirt world, as we like to call it. So heavy civil construction, mining, earth moving, anything to do with moving dirt, that's what we're involved in. So yeah, uh, yeah we host events and things, and that's really where I uh, kind of wear my hat. So, in, and I don't even know this. Um... So how did you get into the dirt world to begin with, Ben? I've kind of come from construction my whole life. Like I I was landscaping growing up and I was I've worked in uh kind of erosion control plumbing, some of these uh kind of adjacent type companies. And okay. I've also worked heavily in sales and marketing and have been involved in that. And so it's kind of a blend for me of like, I've spent plenty of time in the field on the mini excavators, like spent my time there. And I've also yep. spent time working with people. And okay. so uh, almost three years ago, I got a call from Aaron and, and uh, one thing led to another and we're here. And here we are. <laughs> here awesome. we are. So you're able to take both of like your, I won't say expertise, but both of your passion, the people and the, and kind of use both of those and, and, and do it as one job. That's awesome. That's so good. yeah, to start the second day, um, day one is over. I think there was uh, an event that we didn't even talk about at, at the end of day one where the exhibit hall was open. We were able to meet vendors and some other stuff, mm -hmm. um, which, which was awesome. Um, that's another topic we can go into later on today. Um, the second day started with Bob Chapman. Um, so what did you think about Bob Chapman and had, had you heard his story before and did you, have you worked with his, his company and what's the relationship there? Yeah. Um, kind of build with and Barry Waymiller, which is, uh, Bob's company. We've chatted briefly. Uh, I think Aaron's been up there a time or two, but really my only exposure was reading Bob's book, uh, maybe a year ago. Okay. Uh, his book is called everybody matters. I could not recommend it more. It's such a good book. And I mean, you heard the talk, you heard what he, what he was talking about. It was, it was absolutely insane. So good. The thing that I love about Bob and about kind of his message is, you know, day one, as we talked about in the last episode, there's there's kind of this military, uh, Ramadi Iraq, that kind of thing, where people are blowing up tanks and the whole thing. And then Bob starts day two with this concept of everybody matters. And what's crazy is they're like, they seem like polar opposites on the front. You know, uh, like one seems like it's come by us, uh, sit around the fire and, and hug each other and stuff. And the other is go to war. But really, I think they're tightly related because it's all about building relationships. It's all about people. It's about how you care about your people. And that's what Echelon Front taught us just as much as Bob taught us, but in a very different way, in a totally different lens. And so uh, what I what I thought of Bob and what I, I, I got to chat with him some before the uh, summit started and uh, hearing his talk, like it was just so rich. Like every word that he was saying was worth listening to because he's, he owns a $3 billion company and he knows his way around people. Like he's 70 something years old, I think, and has been doing this for a hot minute and he gets people. 
and I was uh, I was just really blown away by his simplicity of boiling down these big spooky concepts into very basic principles that anybody can go away and apply right away. And that is really everybody matters. People matter. So start there. Yeah. And I will be totally honest. Like I'm a pretty hyper guy. When I look through the, I was like, yes, yes. And I'm like, Bob Chapman. I'm like Googling him. I'm like, what is, who is this? I had no idea. But when he started and said, I took over a failing business at $18 million in revenue, and now I'm doing $3.2 billion in revenue. He got my attention right there. Like, if this guy can take it from the millions to the billions, I'm listening. And again, it was like, <laughs> I'm committed. Like, I took notes. Um, and like you said, once you started talking about the relationships, that's what it's about. It's about people knowing that you care about them. That's what that's what we all want to build is those relationships. And then he even went down a little bit deeper where the people that are underneath of him, he makes sure that that network is solidified. And then he makes sure that the people, it goes a level down. And so, because my thing is like, how does he know all that? He can't know all those people that work for him, right? In all those countries and all everywhere he's, but he's got a system where it, works and he can duplicate it and it also was sincere right like he talked about team members and you know um i think one of the one of the points too like he didn't call it acquisitions like people you know like people oh we acquire companies and we do it through acquisition he, he he gave a different analogy of like they're coming into the fold of the team it's not being mm. forced upon them um mm. but yeah so so bob started it off i thought i'm not gonna say soft spoken but he was very intent with the words that he used and i will say i did get one of his books his book was there um i gave it to keith i'm like keith if one, here's another thing if if i come back with something here you know this i think this is uh something that you would be interested in so um the the next uh speaker um and a, a little backstory on Marcus. When I went to sign in to register, um, he was in that hallway. I think it was like the third or second story, like where you got mm -hmm. your badge and you signed in. Mm -hmm. And he was there. And then after I felt so bad that I didn't know, like I had the opportunity because he he came to me and met me, right? And, and was like outgoing and introduced himself but i didn't really know who he was and I, I wasn't like i was like hey thanks nice meeting you like go on with my day and then so that's one thing i took from that too is like really be in the moment and if someone's willing to give their time and be kind make sure you go out of your way to do the same thing for them um mm. but anyway marcus um his story was he was selling pools and if no one knows his story uh Marcus Sheridan he was the pool guy he sold fiberglass pools in i think it was Virginia or somewhere down Virginia. south yeah and it was during the great recession and he was struggling and he decided to answer people's questions no matter what type of question but to answer it and put it on his website and that made him very successful and now he's doing consulting um but it totally changed um you know the way that his business and his trajectory of life but i i will say ben i struggle with it like okay that's the pool guy how you know how do we implement that in the dirt world right I don't know if you have any suggestions there, but I'm, that's one thing that when I came back to do the debriefing, it was like, wow, how do I tell the story of the pool guy to our operations team and, you know, and, and try to tell the story online? Um, so that's something that we are going to be working on. Uh, I don't know what that is or what, but I will tell you that that's one thing that I, that is on my list. Um, 
to to work on. So I don't know if what you took out of Marcus. Yeah, let me let me yeah let me let me uh, ask you about that. So if you're if you are let's say a dirt company because you are what um, what are the questions that your customers might have and not um, not like the general questions, but like, what are the specific questions that customers might have before they buy from you, accept your bids, that kind of, that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I what think are the, a few of those, I think the biggest thing on that is like capability, right? Um, okay. It's hard to portray our capability or, you know, you can say, Hey, I got this much in iron or have this many people, but it's really when plan A doesn't work or plan B and you have plan C and D ready, you know, that's hard to describe to a customer. I think we do a good job on it. Um, and I think, you know, you try to have solutions for your customers, for their problems, um, not just throw it on their laps. Right. And I think that's mm. something that we really try to do, especially in the, in the industry that we're in, if something, if we know that something's not going to go right, and as soon as we know it, it might not be what the customer wants to hear, but the customer needs to hear it as soon as possible. And then we, if we have the solution or we've done the solution before, um, this is, you know, what we would recommend. So anyway, that being said, that's hard to take. I think that's where I struggle is it's hard to take that and put it in wordage on the website, but we'll have to work, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. I, I, uh, I definitely encourage you to work on it because I still think even, even if that's the case, I still think there's uh, a lot of room there for getting better. Oh, and, definitely. Yes. And, and, and producing like producing better content that helps your customers trust you, you know, cause that's yeah. really what, what his Marcus's whole message is about is building trust with customers or would be customers. So his, like his, his example, one of the examples he gave at the, uh, at the event was talking about his, um, he, he was talking about a trucking company. So slightly different, but yep. it's not a pool company, also not a heavy civil company. It's a trucking company, but just how they went through and, and produced content that was all around their customers' biggest problems, their customers' biggest questions. And then instead of trying to make themselves look good and, and trying to uh, kind of produce like, okay, well, here's, here's five trucking companies that we recommend. Actually, just kidding. There's just one. And then here's four that suck. Like they went out of their way to create this content and get it out to customers that uh, really was educational. Yeah, I, I I agree with you 100. percent Even though it was a trucking company, right? You could see the parallel, and they talked about how do you get paid. They talked about mm -hmm. um, bad reviews. Like I thought that was interesting too. They had a couple bad reviews on some truck mm -hmm. truckers, and they they had people talk about it. Um, yeah. So yeah, again, it's something that I I, uh, I think is very valuable. Um, I think it's something that needs some time um, and, and do it right. And I think it was great though. But again, being in, in that seat, right. And Marcus was, was interacting with it. Just the vibe of that whole summit was just incredible. I mean, that's, I don't know about you, but I would say the other thing that I took from that is just, I would say my spirits were lifted, but it was like a good network of people and just a good vibe all throughout but then so the next guest dave turn from gold rush mm -hmm. um which probably everybody sees him uh so dave was um on the first episode if my memory um goes back that far he was on the first episode where he helped them like get set up. And then I think it was season two. He became like a, like a bigger part of, of discovery. Um, but he, he, he comes from the mining industry, right? His, his grandfather and father had 
asphalt plant and a mining quarry um, for aggregates in Wash state of Washington. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's his, yeah. that's his story. I would say, he, you know, his, his talk was we got to be promoting the good stuff. Um, we got to be showing it, you know, we got to show what we do to um, the masses. A lot of the construction industry, right? Like we're, I wouldn't say we're scared, but we're like, uh, we don't want to show that or we kind of hide stuff. Um, but we do great stuff every day, right? We doc we should be documenting and showing people what we do. He he talked about some of the stuff we do do is go out reach to colleges or high schools. Um, I think he was even talking a little bit going to middle schools. Um, signing uh, days was a big thing for him. He he talked about that. Um, but this is what I, I would find from Dave. I saw him in the lobby. He was with like two people. I don't know who the two people were. And I just thanked him. And I asked for a picture. And he was so nice, like a genuine nice guy. Like, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? And I was just taken back like by the kindness that he probably gets that question asked thousand times all over the place you know but he took the time to be personal with me so mm -hmm. that's the thing i would take from from dave i don't know what your interaction so, was with him so good i had very much the same uh same interactions or same kind of feeling after chatting with him it was like oh he's he's um it wasn't like a uh, like a down to downplay it like as though he's just a normal dude but he acted like it and it was it was obvious so no matter what you think of tv and drama it was obvious that his uh personality was just one of like he's just a regular dude you know, like he, yeah he w lives and works and and breathes dirt and uh and he's good with it like he's not trying to be somebody he's not yeah after he went i believe there was um dan garcia cw matthews um mm -hmm. was was on um and he talked about how they have changed some uh i'm not gonna say laws but changed some curriculum right in in the way that the high schools they've brought technology from the contractors and into the schools um they have written curriculum for the schools and he talked about that he talked about the high school recruiting video you know, and celebrating people, you know, for sign on days. And so I, I would say too, like for my daughter, it was very emotional the day that she signed to play basketball for her college. Right. Like, but then it hit, I'm like, man, what about those people that they are making the decision that their talent, right. Is in construction. Like they know it, right. They know that, that's their talent and they want to shine and signing day should be, you know, pretty much for everybody. Um, not just sports and not, not just um, if you're going to a certain university or college or whatever, but um, it was very interesting that they do signing uh, bonuses and recruiting, just, they take it to the different level. So I don't know if you wanted to touch on that. Yeah, it's it's uh, C.W. Matthews and and Dan and his team have done a really good job of of creating a track, which I think is the the thing that maybe anybody listening could take away from this. You know, when I when I came up, it was all it was all kind of who you know. It was can you start in the morning? Uh, you know, yeah, grab your boots and you get going. And what what C.W. Matthews has done at a at a big scale is kind of operationalized recruiting and getting people into the industry, getting the next generation into the industry, let's say. And I think whether you're 1,400 people like them or you're 400 people or you're 40 people or even smaller, I think you can take bits and pieces of that and build some kind of onboarding or build some kind of like celebrate like you're saying it's like celebrating the fact that kids are coming into the industry and making that a big deal like 
con- congrats, you know, congrats to them. They're, they're making a good choice instead of, Hey, why don't you have your boots on? Like get to work. So that's the, um, that's just one of many things I could take away from Dan's, but, but that was something that I think people could do right away. Yeah. And again, what I found from Dan was it's real life. Like he's, he's, he's in it. Even he said it, like he's doing public work. He's always the lowest bidder and they're able to execute and bring in new talent and promote from within also and educate and, and build up. So the last portion um, was a, was a guest panel uh, they talked about hurdles in the industry. Um, that was that was pretty eye opening. How they're just you know people are willing to help in the industry. I think if you ask somebody in the industry, they're willing to give you the two cents or at least guide you in the right direction if you're if you don't know. Um, but I I will say this. I I found it fascinating that there was one company who brought all six employees. Like all their whole, like their whole team was there, all six of them. Um, and they were describing how they do. I'm like, how do you do work with six? They were like, well, sometimes we're by ourselves. Sometimes we team up. It depends on the job. And then you, like you said, there's, there's members there that had hundreds of employees. So it's, it was a takeaway for everybody, no matter the size of your business, um, how many people you had working or what special niche you have in the industry. It was definitely, there was something there for everybody. Um, I'm excited for next year. Um, It is going to be in Texas again. I don't know if you have any other details on, on next year. Yeah. Yeah. So next year, November 4th through the 6th in San Antonio, there will be the uh, Area Dirt World Summit 2.0. And definitely welcome anybody to check it out and get signed up if you're if you're interested to join us um chris i got a question for you if you don't mind yeah too, on on that note which is you know we we put this on we were hoping for the best we were you know like this is our first this is our, the first annual so yeah. there's first. a whole bunch of things that we don't know like there's there's tons of um there's a bunch of risk uh, on our part, there's risk on the part of uh, you and everyone else who attended. But knowing what you know now, having been to the first one and assuming that we're not going to disappoint for year two, like what would you say to somebody who has maybe thought about coming or is considering coming but hasn't like pulled the trigger yet? Yeah, so I enjoy these, you know, kind of summits where you can get something we all want to grow. Right. And so, especially in my position, the connection is what I feed off of. Right. Like I love meeting people. I love interacting with people. Um, it was a little, like, I, I will say when you first like emailed me, I was like, man, what's it going to be like? Like, wow, this is an investment. Like, but I was all in, right. Like, I'm like, here you go. I'm going to set a date. We're going to do it. You know, we'll go from there. I think that if you look at it in the lens of you're going to learn at least one or two things from this, um, it's worth it just then, right? I don't think you can implement all this stuff right off the get-go. I think you have to chunk it down because it's just so much in volume of good, of just good content. You got to chunk it down, but it was way valuable. I would recommend everybody go to it. I mean, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, Ben, but I think next year it's going to be, you know, probably two or three times bigger than it was this year. And and space is going to be limited. You know what I mean? Like, I think mm-hmm. I see you guys selling out, you know, in the beginning, just because it was, in my mind, it was way better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. And so if that was my bar, you know, I knew I was going to get something out of it, but man, like every one of these speakers, I got something out of every one of them. Um, so yeah. Good, good stuff. And, and for the record too, we greatly appreciate you joining. Uh, I know it was a risk. I know it was, you're rolling the dice and I'm, there is nothing better that, that you could say to me than I got more out of it than I was expecting. 
because if you came and you were expecting something uh, and you got more out of it, then that that means that we uh, we're winning as yeah. a as a group. So that's huge. Yes. And for the record, Ben, I just want to thank you. Um, I, I know I probably send some crazy emails and ask you some crazy questions, but I appreciate you. I appreciate Bill DeWitt. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate everything that you do. Um, I appreciate our connection. So I just want to say thank you to you. Thank you to Bill DeWitt. And I do look forward to November 4th of 2024. Um, in San Antonio, Texas. I know I will be there. I know there will be other team members from Brubacher that will be there, and it will be 2.0 of the Dirt World Summit. I look forward to it. Looking forward to having you. Thank Appreciate you, Ben. It. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Brubacher podcast today. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our podcast so you can listen to the new episodes each month. Share it with your friends in the industry and those who might like to learn more about the construction industry. Feel free to check out our website at www.brubacher.net. I'm Keith Brubacher, president of Brubacher Excavating Incorporated, and we hope you found our discussion insightful and we look forward to the next time together.